Welcome, thank you for joining me once again today. All of us maybe at one stage of our lives have had a friend come to us who's broken. They've had some kind of trauma in their life and they are in desperate need of some comfort and some understanding from us being a friend. Or maybe you were that broken person. You were that person who went to seek some kind of help from somebody because you were broken, you were in a situation where something was wrong, something was hurting, there might have been a family breakdown, it might have been a relative breakdown, it could have been another friend even. But you see, we live in a world that is so full of confusion and doubt. And nothing has changed since the Garden of Eden when the devil came along and caused confusion and doubt to Eve and Adam. And therefore we saw the consequence of what happened in the world. But you see, in today's world, it's very different. We have such a, a, a technology dynamic world that information travels so quickly and in an instant. But quite often, that information might just be a partial truth. Therefore, reputations are ruined, friends and families are torn apart, simply because people haven't got the facts right. And also, then there are those people who deliberately go out there to distort the truth or tell a lie in order to harm somebody's reputation or, or their work or, or something in their life to destroy them, especially if you're a high-profile person, um, they're after you. But it also happens to people who are not high-profile people. Um, and, and these sort of lies tear families apart, they tear friends apart, they tear relatives apart, they put mums and dads against each other, grandmas against children, all kinds of things happen. And this is all, you can take it back to the Garden of Eden, like I said, because doubt began there when the devil said to Eve, you know, you won't die, you'll be like God. And you see, unfortunately, mankind has this desire to want to be powerful and almighty and all-knowing and, and uh, pride sets in and, and, and takes over. And, and that is what it is. We, we get deceived. But you see, broken friends are very, very, very hard to heal. We've all had uh, tra uh, tra uh, traumas in our life and dramas in our life of different kinds at different times. And today I say to you that there is only one solution for all those traumas, all those dramas, all those broken friendships can be solved simply by what the Bible tells us. Now you say, well, you've made that too easy, Brother Reeve. No. Let me explain to you today and take you on a journey through the Bible, the oracles of God, the divine library, and show you how that is absolute truth, that God can give you healing through broken friendships, through broken relationships. And I'm not saying that they're going to come out perfectly. That's not what I'm telling you, because if I told you that, I'd be a liar. Okay, And I don't want to do that. But what I want to tell you is that God can give you comfort, God can give you peace, God can give you understanding by coming to a knowledge of His Word and what happens in those types of relationships and how we can move on in life from those things without all that anger and angst and problems inside us. Because the Lord said, I'll give you a peace that passes all understanding. And that understanding, of course, is referring to mankind. We just cannot understand the things of God because they are so mighty, they are so great, and they're so wonderful. So please come with me on this journey as I take the Bible and show you how there is peace, how there is healing, and how there is strength to overcome broken relationships and broken friends. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, today, Lord, as we come before you, Lord, we understand our weaknesses, Lord, and we want you and your word to encourage us to overcome these things that beset us, that give us so many problems in our life. Lord, only you can help us through those problems and show us how we can overcome these things because Christ overcame the world, he overcame the devil, he overcame death. And through your word and through your son, Jesus Christ, there is healing and there is hope, Lord, no matter what the situation Anybody can come to Christ anytime, any place. Lord, and I pray this day that they would do that and take the opportunity to open your Bible, your word, Lord, and hear the wonderful words that the Lord has to tell us. I pray all these things in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. The Lord 
promises us many things in his word. And when we turn to the book of Ezekiel chapter 36, we're going to read what the Lord has promised to those that love and follow him. It says this in chapter 36, verse 26, it says, A new heart also will I give you and a new spirit will I put within you. That's the Holy Spirit. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and I will give you an heart of flesh. Verse 27. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and keep my judgments and do them. And in verse 28. And ye shall dwell in the land that I gave your fathers, and ye shall be my people, and I will be your God. You see, coming to the Lord and being focused upon the Lord gives you an opportunity to escape the confusion and the doubt that besets our world today. You see, if, if you go to one of the search engines, and, and there are lots of them, um, you'll find that there are over 4,000 different religions in the world today. So that means that there are 4,000 uh, different denominations out there uh, um, giving you some kind of a f false prophet, false religion, false idea that are not Bible-based, okay? They're, they're somewhere else. They've got some other kind of thing where you have to do work or you have to do some sort of meditation or you have to try and be good enough or do something. No, the Bible doesn't say any of that. You don't have to try to be good enough. No, no, no. The Bible doesn't say that anywhere. Open the book and show me where it says, try to be good enough and you'll get to heaven. No, 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 no. The Bible has never, ever, ever said, try to be good enough. The Bible has always said it only comes through Jesus Christ. Okay, there is no other way to heaven. In the Old Testament, it was different. There, there, there was the sacrifices and there was things that you had to do in the law. But in the New Testament, which is in Christ's blood, all you have to do is ask forgiveness of sins and trust Christ. There's no other way. You see, I recently heard a story from a, a good pastor friend of mine who, who um, prior to being saved, was, was a farmer and, and quite, I guess, a successful farmer at that. He had uh, uh, some sort of cattle on his farm and was growing other things. And he said that, you know, once or twice a year, he was in a very remote location, once or twice a year that you'd have all the different denominations come through and, and give, give a message. So, you know, I don't need to name them, there's just lots and lots of them that would come through their little town and the farmers would gather and hear a message. And he said, you know, the whole time that this happened, that he was at the farm, not once, not once, did any one of those that travelled out there, those denominations, explain to those farmers that it was simply by coming to Christ and asking forgiveness and, uh, of sins and trusting Christ to be your Lord and Saviour? That was never heard. They would read the Bible, they would read excerpts from the Bible, they would say things, but they never, ever, ever said, just trust Christ, come to Christ, ask Him for forgiveness. Such a simple thing. And he said this, he said, you know, it's not what they said, because they were reading out the Bible, but it's what they didn't say that caused him confusion. And praise God, it did cause confusion, because he went to his wife one day and he said, look, we've been listening to these men, he said, but there's something missing. I don't know what it is. He wasn't saved. He said, I don't know what's missing, but something's not right. The whole picture's not there. We've got a little piece of a drawing, but there's more missing. And praise the Lord, he sought out a, a, a Baptist pastor who could lead him to, to the Lord. And he's been a pastor now for generations and generations. And his son's a pastor and his grandson is going to be a pastor as well. Praise the Lord. You see, but because it wasn't being told, he had to go out seeking. And I encourage you, if, not, if it's not told in your town, your city, your street, if it's not told, if people have not been told that Jesus Christ alone saves, and you know it, you tell them. That's your duty. Christ wants you, wants you to tell the people that he is the only way. John 14, 6, Jesus saith, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. No confusion, no works, just by coming to Christ. It's simple. And again, let's get back to the thing about confusion in the world because this is what separates people is that confusion. You see, when families get mixed up in this religion and that religion and this prophet and that prophet, it, it tears them apart. What, what should be so, so, so simple, boy, the devil is happy. 
because he's over there and she's over there and he's up there and he's over there and this is not working and that's not working and this prophet said this and that prophet said this, you know. And uh, it reminds me of a story of, of uh, a pastor many years ago, a well-known pastor, I won't name him, there's no need to name him, but um, he predicted the end of the world. And he got all his uh, all his followers uh, to dress in in white robes. And uh, on this particular day, when he said Christ was coming back, okay, and, and they all marched to the top of a mountain in their white robes and waited. And of course, Christ never came because the Bible says no man knows. But he obviously thought he wasn't a no man. I guess I don't know what he thought. Anyway, so uh, and and they, they came down. Of course, they're disappointed, and, and they sat down with, with with this this pastor, this preacher, and said to him, "Well, you know." What went wrong? So he said, let me go back and I'll, I'll start calculating all the mathematics again. So he came back and he said, look, you know, um, 1800 years have gone by. I made a mistake by one year. It's next year. Next year we'll go up the mountain. We'll put our robes on and, and uh, you know, Christ will come and, and we'll be first to meet him because we're on the top of the mountain in white robes. <laughs> anyway, you know and I know <laughs> that... <laughs> Christ didn't come and they were up the mountain in their white robes and of course they came down and uh, by this time they'd realised that he was a false prophet and they splintered. Now you'd think that would be the end of it. Well, sadly for many people when they work under a false prophet like that, that is the end of it. They don't believe it anymore. The friendship's broken, the, the trust is broken, it's all gone. Sadly they don't have a faith even. They trust in a man and not God, and that's what's happened. But you know, what happened with that? It actually was the beginning of another denomination. Ah, mamma mia, can you believe it? Can you believe it? This group of people banded back together and goes, well, we'll, 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 we'll take what he wrote and we'll get some of that, we'll get the good bits, we'll leave out the bits that he got all wrong, because he was a completely false prophet. And then they started forming another religion out of that. I won't tell you what it is because you can go research it and find it for yourself. But there's a story, you see, confusion and doubt. And again, the devil is happy. But you see, there were broken friendships there, wasn't there? Him, his believers, those who went away from Christ because they trusted in a man. You can't trust in a man. The best of men is just a man. The best of women is just a woman. I've told you this before. But you need to trust God and God alone. Now we just read in the book of Ezekiel that, you know, Lord will give you the confidence. Lord will give you the strength. You don't need to be in a state of confusion, a state of doubt. Like we find in, in, in our social media today. People are so confused. I mean, they, look, they, they said that there's, you know, over 4,000 religions. Well, there's probably 10,000 in the world because social media, you've got all these other people who are gurus who, who believe they know everything, okay? I know nothing except what God has said. I believe that and that is it. If I have any wisdom, it's godly wisdom. It's not my wisdom, okay? I'm not the judge of anything. God's the judge of everything, okay? I just want you to know that what I tell you is in this book and nothing else. If I tell you a story, that will be a true story. If I tell you something from this book, that is truth because I don't want to confuse anybody. Because there's so much confusion out there. And as I said to you, confusion breaks friendships. And we read throughout the Bible where that has happened. Could you imagine how confused Adam and Eve would have been when their son was murdered by their other son? Such confusion. Only then would they probably look back and go, oh no. There's death. Oh no. There's suffering. Oh no. There's murder. Oh no. There's broken friendship. Our son's got to, our other son's got to go away. He can't be here. We can't trust him. Broken friendships. Wow. Let's look at a verse that will encourage us about friendships. The Bible tells us in Psalm, chapter 147, in verse 3, it says, He healeth the broken in heart, and bindeth up their wounds. God is able to heal the broken in heart, and He's able to bind up their wounds. You see, 
men can give us some comfort. As I said to you earlier, you know, you've probably had a friend who has been broken by, by maybe a marriage or, or, or a family event or another friend or, or a loss of a life. You've probably had that. And you try and comfort them the best that you possibly can as a human being. But I tell you, there's a level above that human being comfort and that's the comfort of God because no human being can give that assurance, that peace, that strength and that understanding that God gives to heal that person who is broken for whatever reason it is. And I've met so many broken people in my life before, some with faith and some without faith. And let me say to you that those that have a good strong faith, generally 90% of the time or more, will recover and move on in life as God wanted them to do. But unfortunately, those who don't have a faith, I would have to say that it's probably less than 20 or 30% who completely recover and are completely restored and can move on in life. They're hanging on to something that is causing either hurt or bitterness. I'm not sure which one, but it is there and they haven't been able to overcome it. Where I said to you, God can help you overcome these things. Let's look at another verse that gives us comfort. The Bible tells us in the book of Isaiah, chapter 41, verse 10, the Lord says this, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Again, God says that not self-righteousness, not self-comfort, not self-indulgence, not false modesty, but with truth and righteousness, God will uphold you when you need it. He'll give you. Because if you're not having that, it's simply because your friendship with God has been broken. You see, you need to come to God if you want that. No man can offer you that, I promise you, because that is a biblical principle that the Lord says, I will give it to you, I will uphold you, I will look after you. And if God says it, it's absolutely true. Let's look at another verse for comfort. The words in my Bible are, of course, in red in this verse because it's the words of Christ in chapter 14 of John, verse 27. Christ says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You see, there's a, there's a great word, afraid, isn't it? The Christ is, is saying that you don't need to be troubled, you don't need to be afraid. Sure. Now, let me not try to appear to be, to be glib here, because when things go wrong, there's a natural sorrow, okay? When, when, when you lose a friend, or, or, or there's a breakup, or there's a death, or there's something goes wrong, and I've seen it before with church splits and all kinds of things, because, yeah, there are church splits because people are not perfect, okay? There's no perfect church this side of heaven, which doesn't exist, and there'll be those problems. But you see, people become uh, afraid, and th th they become... Uh, in, in, in introverted and, and rather than extroverted and, and they become quiet and they become all, all, all the, the natural things that take place in a human being and there's nothing wrong with that. Those are natural emotions to cry, to be hurt, to be upset. All those things are natural. But when you've come to the point that that actually stops and life begins again. You need not false hope, false gods, false prophets, maybes. You need absolutes. The Bible is an absolute. It is not a maybe. It is not a could be. It's not a if. It is a yes. And God does not lie. God is not capable of lying. God is not capable of, of telling you anything other than the truth. And sadly, sometimes, boy, that hurts. Pow! That really hurts because 
Why? Because God loves you. And if you love somebody, you don't want to see them hurt. You don't want to see them in trouble. And God is willing that none should perish. That's you, that's me, that's everybody, anywhere, anytime, any place, regardless of where you are, you can come to God. Nobody can ever stop you from coming to God. Let me tell you that I don't care what country you live, you can come to God anytime you want to. In the privacy of your own room, wherever you may be, God will be there listening, waiting and watching. No works required, only repentance for your sins and a trust in Christ the Lord. That is all. And then those things that trouble the human heart are given a way to be resolved. Friendship can be restored with God. That's a wonderful friendship. Let's look at another verse uh, that God gives us to encourage us. The first book of the New Testament, Matthew, tells us in chapter 11, verse 28, the words of Christ are recorded. It says this, Come unto me, all ye that labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Verse 29, Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. Ye shall find rest unto your souls. Verse 30, For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. We're often troubled in this world by burdens. Um, sometimes they're financial burdens, sometimes they're uh, life burdens, they're, or there might be health burdens. Um, there are all kinds of different burdens that beset us in the world. And Christ says, take my yoke. And the yoke is something that used to join uh, the animals when they were working um, to, to plow the fields. It was a joining thing. So Christ says, join with me. Because my burden is light. I will give you peace. I will give you rest. I will give you strength. Again, the Lord is reaffirming through his word that how broken friendships can be restored by Christ giving his own example of, of the yoke, of, of being together, working together. You see, when people work together, much more can get done. You see, and when they put the yokes on, on these uh, animals in the early days, the two animals were joined together and had twice the strength. And some say when you join the two together that there's even more than twice the strength, which could be so. Scientifically, they wouldn't say that, but it's quite possible that that's the case. So that is what Christ is referring to. So there you go. And the words of Christ, as I say to you, now I've heard people say to me, oh, the words of Christ, are, you know, they, they were from 2,000 years ago. They don't matter. Well, they do matter. They are relevant. This is what the Bible says in Hebrews 13, 8. It says this, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. These words don't grow old. You grow old. I grow old and everybody in this world grows old and then ultimately dies and then the judgment. I was actually looking at uh, some statistics the other day and again this is uh, science of, of I guess of data or numbers or whatever it, it can't possibly be that accurate but they say over a hundred billion people have lived on earth since God created it. Now, I don't know if that's a, some sort of estimate they've made because of evolution or some sort of whatever, but who knows? But whatever it is, we know that man is only going to be living in this era for three score and ten. The Bible tells us that, which is 70 years, and some a little more because they're stronger or maybe they're living in a, in a cleaner environment with fresher air or, or whatever they're doing, who knows? But 70 is about the average. Okay, so th that's what God says. And this book doesn't fail you. It, it, it is absolute. It is complete. It is in error. It is without error. It is the wonderful word of God. And it's the only thing that will give you the peace, the strength, and the hope, and the understanding. It's not a skyhook. For those who believe it's a skyhook, you haven't read it. You don't even know what it is. You would never clue. You've heard it from somebody who told you about somebody from somebody from somebody who wouldn't have a clue. 
Do you know most of the people that have ever come to me and said something about the Bible that are not saved know nothing about it? And I say, come on, let's sit down and read it. Let's, let's look at what these things you're saying. Because they're not even there. They don't exist. Because you've heard it from a third or a fourth hand. That's a devil at work because there it is. Or they've listened to some false prophet who's told them that you know Christ is going to come back on this day and the, the, the world's going to end on this day and that day. I, I actually um, witnessed to a young man once um, in, in the city here in Sydney and um, he came from, from an, an Islamic background and uh, he, he got saved. And I'm not sure where he actually got saved or how he got saved. I've no idea. He just came to me and told me his background and, and told me that he, he was previously uh, Islamic and he'd come to Christ. And anyway, so uh, I, I spent you know, a couple of weeks talking with this man and, and teaching him some Bible and bits and pieces. Anyway, uh, and lo and behold, because he worked in the city, he, he'd walk down the main street, George Street, all the time, and he'd come across these people who uh, were saying that the world was going to win. There was going to be a massive tsunami. God was going to end everything. They're given dates and times and places and all this stuff. And he got sucked into this. And he believed it. Absolutely believed it. This, this guy was, was publicly even saying on the television here in Australia, the world's going to end, the tsunami's going to take over Australia, and the, 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 you know, the, the, the rebound of the tsunami's going to wipe out half the world. And this poor person, who was not grounded in this word, possibly genuinely saved, I believe so, I'm not the judge, God's a judge, but he believed the nonsense and the rubbish that was told by this person. Of course, it never happened. God said, no man, no man, again. Hmm. Anyway, I don't know where he is today. I don't know if he's still in the faith or he may have gone back to Islam. Who knows? But that is what happens when confusion and doubt come in. And of course, the friendship between him and I was broken simply because I said to him, listen, that's a false prophet. He's lying to you. There will be no tsunami. There will be no end because he says there'll be one. There won't be one because God said no man. And he's no man, right? That's for sure. You see what happens? Friendship was broken. I was having time with this man to try and teach him some things about the Bible. There are some things he understood. But unfortunately, he wasn't warned about the false prophets and the friendship got broken. What can I say? I can only tell you that this book needs to be read and understood and not messed with. There's too many people messing with it and that destroys lives and families. I've been a Christian, as I've told you, for over 25 years. I've seen so many churches, so many families, so many friends divided simply because they get some idea that there's a grey section in this Bible and they're going to interpret it another way. Look what the Bible says about this in 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 20. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. Verse 21, for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but Holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Now in 2 Peter chapter 2 verse 1 it continues and says, But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. The Bible's very clear about not changing it. Don't change it. Don't try to read something into it that's not there. You know, you can if you want to, but you know what you're actually doing? You're breaking friendships. You're breaking friendships with people. You're breaking friendships with family and brothers and sisters in Christ. But you know what you're doing when you change the Bible? You break friendships with God. I've seen it. Yeah. Boy, it hurts. Keep the Bible clean, pure and scripturally sound. 
Don't go looking for hidden things in there like the false prophets do. Don't go crunching numbers and doing all that kind of stuff. It's not there. God's given us this for peace, understanding, hope and strength. Let's read another verse about that. The Bible tells us in Proverbs chapter 18, verse 24, it says this, A man that hath friends must show himself friendly, and there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. In order for us to have friends, we, we need to be friendly. Now, I know some people are, are naturally not necessarily... A, a friendly type of people. They're, they're more introverted and they don't mix a lot and they might just have a couple of friends and then I know people who are complete social butterflies and they've got loads and loads and loads of friends. But that's okay. But generally as human beings during our lifetime we only have a handful of very close friends that stick with us because like I said there comes that confusion and doubt and, and people drift away. That's not the only reason, of course. Sometimes you leave a job and go somewhere else or you move countries, you get married. Those things happen and, and friends. But if you want to have friends, you have to be friendly. And that, Look, I know people who all their friends are, are their immediate relatives and families and, and there's nothing wrong with that either. But let me tell you, your greatest friend, your greatest friend should be God. And the greatest book that you ever read will be this Bible. That is the truth, because nothing else ever will or can compare to what is written in this book. If you're looking for that ultimate friendship, that ultimate friendship comes from God. Let's check another verse. The Bible tells us in the book of Psalms, chapter 133, verse 1, Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Verse 2, it's like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went down to the skirts of his garments. It is wonderful, isn't it? You see, friendship can be beautiful, but friendship can also be hurting, as we've discovered today. But we found the cure. There is a cure for the friendships that have gone wrong, the friendships that are hurting, the friendships that are inside. Forgiveness, of course, is always a great part of the healing process of any friendship. And today, I want to talk to you about a broken friend that needs your ultimate asking of forgiveness. You see, Jesus Christ, his body was broken on the cross at Calvary for you and for me for your sins for my sins Christ is the broken friend for those that who have trusted him he's not far away you don't have to work you don't have to try to be good enough it only takes confession the simple confession that we are a sinner, that we have transgressed against God, we have broken fellowship with God, that we need to come back to it. We need to have the Lord Jesus Christ as our Saviour. His body was broken on the cross, his blood was shed for all mankind, not just for a few, don't believe that when anybody ever tells you that of the devil and you'd believe it. Christ said, whosoever whosoever will come. I tell you today if your friendship's broken with somebody maybe your fault, maybe their fault whatever forgive Ask them to forgive you. But ultimately, ask Christ to forgive you. Because then, the peace that passes all understanding, the love, the strength, the hope, comes through in your life, in your heart. And the friendship's restored. Broken friend no more, but a Lord and a Saviour. 
an eternal home in heaven, not a skyhook. I pray today you make that decision to follow Christ and seek forgiveness. He's waiting. What are you waiting for? Restore a broken friend. Lord bless. Bye for now.